Hello and welcome to the Philippines. Can you live on 1,000 U.S. dollars a month in the Philippines? About 50,000 U.S. or Philippine pesos. Uh, we're going to go over some cost of living facts and a lot of figures, a lot of information here. I want to share some of my cost of living experience for seven years. And I've got a number of sites and data. We're going to talk about inflation, um, shrinkflation, where you get uh, you, you pay the same amount of money, but you get a smaller uh, product. And, uh, you know, a lot of companies are doing that. They're giving you a smaller package. And uh, cost of living, we're going to talk about uh, some of the bargains in the Philippines and some of the things that are rising in cost. So stick with us as we get into this. I'm also going to share a number of sites that have information on cost of living where you can actually input information and uh, add, to the, add to the database of information. Now, cost of living should start with your budget. You should know how much you have available to spend. If you don't, you're in big trouble already. Um, you need to determine, you need to live within, within your means, whether it's here or the U.S., Thailand, wherever you're going to be. If you're spending more than what you have in the bank or what your monthly income is, uh, you've got a problem. And you have to determine how much you think you can spend on housing. And I suggest you start lower than you think uh, you can spend, you can afford, because what always happens, there's always extra expenses involved in your life. And I'm going to go over that. I'm going to share some of my expenses and uh, how it's affected my budget. Um, if, you, if you start high, if you start thinking, well, I can, I can afford this, and then uh, you find out that your, your savings account, your checking account, is being depleted little by little every month because you're spending more than you're taking in you're going to have problems eventually. By the way, I've been making videos for almost seven years now uh, here in the Philippines. Got a lot of cost of living videos. I've got a lot of uh, real estate condo videos. A salesman in the malls would grab me and say, come and look at my condo. I always had a uh, camera with me. I took videos, started putting them up. What do they cost to rent? What do they cost to buy? What do you get? Um, all that kind of stuff up there. Got uh, travel videos, uh, lots of different videos, reviews. And anyway, so check that out. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, thumbs up or thumbs down if these videos are helpful. There are ways, in the first comment of every video, there are ways to support the channel uh, with, with PayPal, uh, buy me a coffee. And I am working on a special video to put out each month for all the people I have emails uh, for who have uh, supported uh, the channel in, in, in some way monetarily as well. I was curious to see what other people were saying, so I did a search online to find out what other people were saying about the cost of living. Of course, it varies if you're, if you're living in the high-end areas of, uh, of, uh, of Manila or other cities, it's going to cost you more, location, location, location. Anyway, I came across this site, and it's it's a bit dated. It's a, it's a couple of years old at least. How much does it cost to live in the Philippines and down here? The least amount that a person can spend to be comfortable, and comfortable really is a broad range of what comfort is to all of us, is $600. Now, I t definitely disagree with that or so. And for a couple, $900 will be sufficient. However, if you want a swanky lifestyle, $1,000 to $1,200 is sufficient. Totally disagree with that. It's much more than that. Now, I am familiar with guys with very low budget, very low pensions, uh, very low savings, whatever, who come in and they find a place for 100 you know, very sparsely uh, furnished uh small room for maybe 5,000 pesos, uh, 100 U.S. dollars a month, and uh, they can live on that. And, uh, you know, I've had guys ask me, can I live on $800 a month? And my answer is, you can do that until you can't. Eventually, there's going to be medical expenses, dental expenses, something, travel expenses, some emergency that's going to 
cut into that. Just depends upon, you know, you need to have backup money, backup plan, plan B, C. If things go south, what are you going to do? Where are you going to go? If you're relying on just that very small budget, I, I suggest you get a, a very cheap room and you, you can sit in your room, count flowers on the wall, play solitaire till, till dawn with a deck, deck of 51, smoking cigarettes and watching Captain Kangaroo. It, do, do any of you remember that song? Your largest cost is going to be housing costs, uh, most likely, depending on your lifestyle. And you have choices. You have, you have apartments. You have condos. You have just a room if you want that, a room in a house, a room in a building, uh, boarding houses. Uh, most of you would not want to go um, that low in, in budget, but uh, you have condominiums. I've been living in, I've lived in six different condominiums in seven years here in the uh, Philippines. I just signed another 12-month lease. I've got a, because of the last uh, last two plus years of uh, travel restrictions around the world, uh, rent rental prices have dropped. Uh, I'm paying about 25% what it used to rent for. And I have rented places from Twelve, thirteen thousand a month when I first came here. Uh, to, uh, the next one was fifteen thousand. I think the next one was twenty thousand. I paid twenty-five thousand for a nice one-bedroom in Persman condominiums. Um, I'm presently paying twenty-five thousand uh, pesos a month, and that equals four hundred and fifty-four U.S. dollars uh, because of the exchange rate of fifty-five uh, plus pesos per U.S. dollar right now. My electric is averaging uh, 3,000 pesos a month, about 60 U.S. dollars. Uh, many months it's less than that. It's gone up a little bit. Uh, uh, there's a, I think there's a rate increase recently. I just saw a notice in our elevator as well because they're adding a gym to my condominium and they so they're hiring a couple more people to take care of that because there was a, a minor uh, wage increase for all employees, very minor, and a number of other reasons. They are increasing the condo fees here. And I'm not, my condo fees are included in my rent, but they're increasing them by 75 pesos per square meter, which is pretty substantial. I don't know what it is presently, but that's going to add about 3,000 pesos, about $60 to my rent. And water is very small at the present time. They're talking about raising water rates as well to try to reduce the usage. Uh, 436 pesos, uh, less than, well, right around 8 U.S. dollars. So my housing, including electric and water, cost me uh, 28,430 at 55 pesos to the U.S. dollar. That's 516 U.S. dollars. In the U.S. in Phoenix, Arizona, I think my rent would cost uh, twelve to fourteen hundred dollars, almost three times as much. Food is my next largest uh, budget item, and this is uh, there again depends upon you eat out. I've met guys who never cook anything, and uh, people who like myself eat in a whole lot. And this is a picture from when I first came here in 2015, when I did a video about cost of living. Um, presently, I've, my, my food expenses, you know, I've got a girlfriend now, but uh, we both cook, and uh, I, have, I have extrapolated her ex expenses out because she buys a lot of different stuff that I don't, uh, we, we don't eat the same food, so it's not too difficult uh, to figure that out, and I, and I average, these prices are averaged over a number of months. Uh, originally, I was paying about 250 dollars US uh, a month in 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 groceries and uh, now I'm I'm spending probably a little bit less not counting the things that I stock up on uh, but just the monthly usage and maybe about 50 US dollars uh, for eating out each month so about uh, three hundred dollars a month uh, for food, and uh, my my girlfriend actually buys a lot of the food that she brings home. She she shops uh, after work sometimes, and she gets the things that she wants. Some once a month, maybe we go shopping together. 
My diet has also changed too. I'm eating a healthier diet in the last the last couple of years. Uh, and, you know, being locked up uh, gave me a lot of time to do research. But I, I eat two meals a day most days now. Uh, in fact, three days this week, I've only eaten one meal. And I'm eating uh, more healthy fats and fat satiates, uh, less carbohydrates. And uh, I'm not hungry oftentimes until about noon. So I eat a meal at noon, uh, three eggs, and, uh, and like last night I had a salad. I had a salad, that's what I ate until we had uh, dinner. Transportation, this was a taxi, the guy had money taped all over the, from different countries, taped to his roof. Anyway, my transportation, uh, taxis, motorbike taxis, and parking my motorbike uh, runs me 4,150, uh, or about 75 US dollars, and uh, a little bit higher than normal because of the motorbike parking, with a little, little over half of that. Moving on to immigration, uh, going to uh, renew your pass visa in your passports, uh, the ACR card that's required every day, the, uh, depending upon the type of visa you need, you need to do a, a check-in once a year in January and February, one of those months before March. And that'll, that costs, I think, 500 pesos. Uh, little things like that, uh, sometimes you need to get copies made, so I figure about 40 U.S. dollars a month, about 2,000 pesos a month. Medical, dental, and the pharmacy, over-the-counter type stuff. Um, I'm lucky in that I don't take any prescription drugs unless I have some issue. I go to the doctor and get something for an antibiotic or something. Uh, so I'm, my numbers are pretty low here. Phil Health costs me about uh, it's under 8,000 pesos a, a year, and if I, if I, that's under, that's uh, like $160 a year, and if I average that out over the months, um, and then my pharmacy bill is probably about $13 a month U.S., and I, I buy a little bit over counter of this stuff, uh, not very much, a little bit for uh, allergies, um, loratadine occasionally, use that seldomly, but I've, got, I've gotten away from taking almost anything. Very seldom take pain, any pain medication, so I'm very fortunate uh, health-wise. Uh, do buy a number of herbs and stuff like that, multivitamins, uh, big big package of uh, Kirkland brand. They had really good ratings uh, years ago uh, for absorption, and I try to get most of my nutrition from, from food anymore. Um, I, I do take a couple. I take vitamin D, but I get a lot of vitamin D from other foods, mushrooms, in fact. Uh, one, and, and fish, and salmon, and uh, sunlight. Anyway, so I average about uh, 2,600, 2,700 pesos, or about 53 U.S. dollars a month for my medical needs. I do need to go see a dentist again pretty quick, so that will up my average. Entertainment, I think I've always uh, budgeted around 50 US dollars about, and that comes to about uh, 2,750 pesos uh, a month, and I stick pretty close to that, I think, on average. I don't drink a lot, and uh, a lot of times, like here at 301 Ramos Bar in Cebu City, uh, it's not unusual. They've got a really good pulled pork sandwich, good burger, a number of other things, and I separate the drink from the food, so that's in my budget, I, I, I know what I eat and what I spent on a couple beers as well. Of course, entertainment could be anything. Move, uh, movies, uh, ice skating, and they've got ice skating at SM Seaside Mall. Um, lots of different activities you can get involved with uh, for entertainment. I'm going to include everything else under stuff, and you will find that you are picking up stuff. Um, one thing I did not include is uh, girlfriend expenses, and I uh, many years ago I did a a video about girlfriend expenses. I've done a, another video about girls, friends, and other expenses, and I will link that at the end of this video. But uh, the how much does a girlfriend cost? Got a lot of views, a lot of comments, some not so nice. So 
And so I, I made it a private video, and I, that's no longer up. But uh, the stuff, uh, I probably average about 30 U.S. dollars, about 1620 a month. That can be furniture. It can be um, plants. It can be tools. It could be cookware that you need. Uh, just lots of different stuff. Glue, um, shoestrings, just lots of different stuff. I did not include cl clothes. I don't. I very seldom buy clothes, but maybe twenty dollars a month in there as well. Um, I, I originally, I the, for many months, I budgeted about a hundred U.S. dollars, about five thousand U.S. pesos a month to travel. And of course, we've been locked down for most of two years, so. Uh, nothing ever happened with that. And my experience, observation, it, it, the way I did it, I, I didn't travel every month. I I would uh, wait two, three, four months, and then I would take a longer trip, which I like. I don't like day trips, going out, coming back. Uh, once I'm out, I want to spend some time, travel a bit, relax, enjoy myself. And so those expenses actually tend to be under that with the exchange rate. Now $100 would be about 90 US dollars as well. I also have not included uh, expenses I still have at home, very few, but in, for instance, one is uh, one is life insurance. I, I pay about $42 a month, I think, automatically on life insurance. Uh, gifts, I, I don't give many gifts, but I, I, all my kids and grandkids are well over 18, so very rarely do I send gifts anymore um, back home. I did not include gifts here, but if you travel, you come back, you're expected to bring some sort of gift back to family and friends and such. Uh, bong, something like that it's called, uh, doesn't amount to very much. So let me get into the totals and kind of explain how it works out uh, peso and Filipino-wise peso versus U.S. dollars. So if I added correctly, I think my average monthly expenses are is 56,265 pesos divided by 55 pesos to the U.S. dollar. That's 1,023 USD. Now if I take that same amount uh, for a long time, many, many, many months, the peso exchange rate hovered right around 50 pesos to the U.S. dollar. In fact, when I came here in 2015, it was 45.5 pesos to the U.S. dollar. So if the that's difference in that uh, in that exchange rate, five pesos uh, for each dollar, if if we were still getting uh, the the 50 pesos, it would make my expenses 1,125 USD. So the exchange rate has a major factor in your cost of living. In fact, that's about a 10% difference. 10% um, difference, so that major, makes a major effect. If it was back to 45 or even lower, uh, of course your dollar or whatever currency you're using would not go. And I've done a previous video about how much is your money worth? And I've covered many of the different uh, major currencies. Um, so I'll put a link to that video as well. Now this video, this video is getting a bit long. I've, uh, I had uh, pre-recorded a number of videos about what the experts say, a couple of the other sites. And what I'll do, I will, uh, I will post that video in the next day or two uh, because uh, I think <laughs> most people don't want to watch a uh, 30 minute video so I will make two videos out of this cost of living thing and put that up uh, but yeah there's there's uh, you know we get their choices to make how much you want to spend what's your budget how much how much money do you have I've, I've met a number of expats and no of uh, other expats who came here thinking they had plenty of money to live here and you know they sold their house their car their boat everything there they they, they weren't getting a pension yet and moved here, built the girlfriend a house, built their family a house, uh, had some medical issues, various things, and uh, pretty much ran out of money. And now, now what do you do? You're not pension age yet, so what do you do? Do you go back and work? I, I know some expats who've done that. I know expats who 
come here for for a couple months, they go back home, or I, I know some that who go to Saudi Arabia, go to different places, Australia, work in mining, work in the oil industry, whatever their their expertise is, different places. There are some people who make additional money here teaching English online. Uh, I've done a video about, about working uh, here as well. And uh, so anyway, thanks for coming along, and uh, we'll put up another video soon. Take care, stay safe, and we'll see you soon.